in the last year, we've had actually several major discoveries based on laboratory findings in the lab. We have, we've identified a protein called CDK4, cyclin-dependent kinase 4. And this protein is, is highly expressed, overexpressed in types of sarcomas called liposarcomas. We all have the protein. We all have a copy, what I mean by copy, one strand of DNA. Uh, and, and that's what we, everybody has. But in liposarcoma, they don't have just one strand of DNA. They have thousands of strands. And it, the protein gets copied. We call it amplified. We recognized this several years ago. And the question was, is it important for cell growth? So they went to the laboratory, and we, we did a lot of laboratory work. And we found that this gene was critical for the growth of a certain sarcoma called liposarcoma, that if you don't have this, this protein in your, in your tumor, if it's, the, the tumors just don't grow. And in fact, we took the next step, but we found a drug. Uh, you know, we, we, you can molecularly try to block it, but we have a drug that you take by mouth and goes to the tumor and turns off the protein. We found you can make the cancer cell die. This drug, which is called PD0332991, doesn't, doesn't have a name yet, um, is highly effective in the treatment of patients with liposarcoma. It seems to prolong their life, to make them live longer, to live without cancer or, or, or with cancer for longer periods of time. And um, we think this will be a transforming event in the field of sarcoma therapy. Uh, another good example is this combination of two new drugs. We found that uh, not only are there, there, there are proteins in the tumor cell that are, are highly expressed, because the CDK4 program, uh, protein is in, in the very nucleus of the, of, the, of the cell. The question is, what about the outside of the cell? Are there proteins on the outside uh, that are, are fed by, by growth factors. So what we've discovered in sarcoma is that in the blood, there are things called growth factors, and they circulate around. Um, we all have these growth factors for normal growth. Uh, but the growth factor circulates, and what it does, it, it, it eventually binds to something called a receptor on the outside of the cancer cell. You can think of this as the, the key fitting into the lock. And, and these keys circulate in the blood until they find the right lock and then they, they fit in, and, and there has to be a perfect match. But if this match takes place, it, the, the key then turns on, like the key fitting in your ignition of your car, and the, like the car gets turned on, the same thing happens with the cancer cell. What we found is there's, there's one particular ignition effect on the, on the cancer cell, and it's called IGF-1. It stands for Insulin Growth Factor Receptor 1. And it is a receptor or a, or a or a lock that fit, that's sitting there on the sarcoma cell waiting for this growth factor to bind to it. And once the key fits into that ignition in sarcoma, its ignition's on, it's off to the races, cancer cell grows and divide. What we did is we took a drug that caps the receptor. So now when the growth factor circulates, like I said before, because of the circulating growth factor, even though it sees the receptor, it sees the ignition, the ignition now is capped in such a way that the growth factor just can't bind. And we showed in the laboratory that this drug, by capping the receptor, will actually make the cancer cell die, in part. But it didn't die completely. So then we had to go back to the laboratory and find out what was the other factor making the cancer cell grow that was not related to the lock and key approach. So it turns out that the, despite this blockage, there is another factor in the cell itself that's part of the motor. Well, that part of the motor is called mTOR. Small m, capital T, small o-r, mTOR. And we found that now if we combine an inhibitor of that part, an mTOR inhibitor, plus a blocker of the receptor, IGF-1R, we, not, we got a profound antitumor effect. Now the cancer cell wasn't just being partially inactivated by the blocking of the receptor, but we now added the blocker of the motor with the blocker of the receptor. You got complete tumor shutdown. So can now we make that happen in patients? So we ran a large national trial, and we treated patients with bone and soft tissue sarcomas, and we showed in that study that we were able to have people stay on drug longer than ever expected. We exceeded our expectations on clinical benefit. We had patients responding who never responded before. That's the research we do here. It's, it's a, a transforming type of research that we think will affect patient care and, and ultimately help all patients across the country.